friends, uh, hello and welcome to On The Horizon, a webcast series from Kerry Group discussing top of mind business issues during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, my name is Damien McLaughlin, I'm from University College Dublin. Uh, today we're speaking to Sonia Nodland, a principal scientist in Kerry's proactive team about how we can educate the human immune system, a topic of great interest to everybody during the COVID-19 crisis. Sonia, welcome uh, to On The Horizon. Thank um, you, Damien. Can an enhanced immune system defend us from COVID-19? Absolutely. Your immune system is the first line of defense to yeah. your body against any foreign pathogens. Um, and especially for something right now like COVID-19, where there aren't any approved uh, pharmaceutical treatments, probably your immune, your immune system is your best defense at the moment. Sonia, you have a very compelling uh, idea, and that is that the human immune system needs to be educated can you can you tell us why that's important and then how it happens? Yeah, certainly. So um, the immune system has a big job, and that is to defend our bodies against any foreign threats. But at the same time, it needs to recognize what is part of our bodies so it doesn't attack us. And so education, like many things in life, is the key here. Um, you know, if you think about sort of big picture of the immune system, it really needs two things to function well. It needs the right weapons and artillery, artillery to um, defend us. So that would be the cells and the antimicrobial molecules that it makes. And then it also needs to know when to use those molecules. So um, food actually turns out plays a pretty important role in this. So um, when we eat food, it, of course, gives us energy for our bodies to work every day and, and get through life, but it also provides us a lot of different kinds of nutrients. And many of these nutrients are absolutely critical for properly making the weapons that the immune system has, for making the cells, for making the different molecules that it uses to defend our body. Um, but a sort of lesser appreciated uh, part of our diet is that um, our diet can actually help educate the immune system as well. Um, Education of the immune system is a pretty complex process. It's been being revealed by scientists around the world really for the last 30 years. Um, and one of the ways that that happens is when the immune system interacts with um, these sort of larger molecules that are present both in our microbiomes and well as well as in our diet. Um, this tells the immune system what is a threat and what is a friend. Um, if it sees, um, for instance, fragments of dead bacteria, viruses in the right context, it understands that this might be a pathogen or this might be a helpful bacteria that we would want to allow to reside in our gut microbiomes. Mm. So when we eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and other foods, um, this gives us exposure to lots of these different kinds of molecules and really helps to educate our immune system. One of the things that has sort of happened in the last, mm, I don't know, 60 years or so, really the second half of the last century, was that <laughs> our diets have changed and we're not really um, experiencing as many of these molecules in our diets as we maybe used to be, or at least it's easier to eat a diet that's not as enriched in these molecules. So one way that we can sort of help with this is to eat foods that are now being fortified by food manufacturers to actually contain these types of molecules. So in this cl climate of, of COVID-19, this idea of uh, using particular types of science to um, enhance the immunity, cap immune cap capabilities of food must be of great interest to food, food producers and the customers that you're interacting with. What are they telling you and what are they asking for at the moment in terms of immunity enhancement? Yeah, so I think um, a lot of our customers, actually all of them, are looking to really respond to consumers' needs and to um, help support the nutrition of the world. And one of the things, of course, that's top of mind right now is how do you support your immune system? And when manufacturers are looking for ways to fortify their foods to support the immune system, I would say the number one ask is for um, value, ingredients they can trust that have value that are yeah. science backed. Yeah. And the science backing, the research that demonstrates that the ingredient is efficacious, that it's safe, and that the claims that are made about what it can do actually are true is probably the biggest ask that we're hearing from our customers right now. Yeah. And so Kerry, with the strength of its research, is able to support that idea and support that principle based on sound research? 
Right. So I would give an example. Um, the proactive health team has an ingredient called Wellmune. It's yep. a baker's yeast beta glucan. And this is an ingredient that has had um, really over 15 years of research investigating how it works in the body. So the mechanism of action and then also um, a great portfolio of efficacy research. And so when we explain to our customers how they can help their um, customers support their immune health, we have a great deal of data that stands behind us that we can yep. show that look, when we did this trial, this really did happen. Um, here is why it happened, because we understand how the mechanism works in the body. Yeah. Sonia, if we're to try and think about the future of immunity and food, because this, to the lay person, this sounds to be a tremendously exciting area. If we were to try and think about the future of immunity and food, what should consumers expect their food products to look like in the future? And and what what should producers be thinking about investing in uh, as they prepare uh, for the next five or seven years of uh, of food pr food products? You know, I think from a consumer perspective, what they should be looking for are quality ingredients. So, you know, we all know that there's quite a range of ingredients out there that purport to support this function or that function. Um, but what you really need to look for is an ingredient that is backed by credible science. So this is science that is done to a gold standard um, that's published in reputable journals by reputable academics. Um, and when you see the, the support, the science support for the ingredient, then you know that what you're getting in that food is actually going to do what it says it's going to do. From a producer perspective, um, with the increased interest in immune health, I expect to see quite a proliferation of immune ingredients. Um, I think that really we've only tapped the, the very surface of what's out there and what could help support immunity. There has um, been a real boon to immunonutrition research in the last 10 years, and I would expect that this um, health crisis is only going to help um, expand that research, increase the funding, and we're going to see more and more ingredients uh, coming on the market and not just coming on the market with maybe one, you know, little study, but they're going to have some very deep knowledge behind them that's going to help explain why this is a good ingredient and why it should be part of your diet. Well, it sounds like a good opportunity for consumers uh, to have food which is better for them and improving immunity is a tremendous opportunity and also a nice platform for innovation on the part of producers. Sonia, thank you for your time today. I, I appreciate your expertise uh, and the insights that you have shared with us. Uh, this has been on, on the horizon and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.